So it's been a little bit more than 24 hours and the majority of those brine shrimp eggs have hatched. You can see here that uh, it appears as though most of those eggs have hatched. Uh, there's a few, actually a bunch of shells down at the bottom. And then you can also see up around the edges, most of those shells have collected there. Now, what we're going to do here is take out the aeration. You can see I've got a light going on here. And so we're going to allow this to kind of sit idle for about 10 minutes or so. The idea being that the bulk of those live brine shrimp will want to collect over here near the light, which kind of minimizes when we open the valve at the bottom, separating the shells from the live brine. Um, I'll show you here in just a couple moments. So it's been about 10 minutes. You can see here there's definitely different stratas or concentrations of life and shells. They're at the very bottom that brown stuff, uh, that's, that's unhatched eggs or uh, spent shells. You can see the orange part is the living uh, brine itself, the, the, the shrimp. Um, the idea with um, shining the light in there, they are attracted to it, but not as definitively or thickly as I thought they would be, but that's, that's okay. Um, and you can see it becomes thinner or lighter as it goes up to the surface. Now, what we're going to do here, so that brown stuff at the bottom we want to get rid of, and the best way to do that is as we open this valve, that first flush of stuff is going to be the brown stuff, and we want to kind of let it out but keep the live brine in, so we have to kind of pay attention and be aware. But uh, watch here uh, the color of that stuff. Now, I doubt if you can see that, but that's all those unhatched um, shells and eggs. Obviously, there's some life in there, but uh, you know, I'm sorry, I can't. I don't have a better way of separating it at this time. So we're going to discard uh, those empty shells, or unspent shells, or unhatched shells. Now that's predominantly 90% plus shellless, freshly hatched brine shrimp. You can see there's a little bit of schmutz there at the bottom of the container, and if we just kind of pay attention to that. Now, <clears throat> here's what it's all about. Notice how the water level has dropped down. But as that water level drops down, those shells, which majority of them have floated up to the surface, those shells are now adhering or somehow attaching to the inside surface of the tank. So that's kind of the nifty way of uh, separating the, the, the live brine shrimp or baby shrimp from his shell by allowing him to hatch in the vessel and then turning off the aeration in this case uh, which the two of them, the, the, the shells rise up to the surface and the live brine continues to swim around or is down, uh, moves down towards the bottom of the tank, kind of attracted by the light. But as we drain the uh, container or, or hatchery, those shells which are sitting at the surface start adhering to the inside surface of the container. So that's, in my opinion, a pretty nifty little way of doing the separation. So we're going to take that first container of uh, shellless brine shrimp or newly hatched brine shrimp without the shells, we'll move it over here into the second container. And again, we'll want to watch that first spurt of stuff coming out because it'll probably be brown shells.
Now there are a series of sieves that you can use to strain out the brine shrimp from the water. Um, and it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to do that because I know I'm setting myself up for another little problem and that problem is I've got brine shrimp that have hatched within this water, they've done their business, uh, whatever, and all I'm doing is moving it over into another tank. To a minor degree, I'm missing an opportunity to put them in cleaner water by straining them out first and then putting them into new water. Uh, maybe I'm being lazy here, uh, but for the moment I'm still kind of learning this whole process, so um, I'm going to continue to go as I am now but that would be something you could consider. So now after seeing what's all involved in decapsulating and raising the live baby brine shrimp, you want to decide if the investment in the equipment as well as the time to produce the live baby brine shrimp is worth your efforts. I can tell you without a question I have gone from an embarrassing 5% success rate as far as growing jellyfish to probably 70 or 80% success now. I've even seen improvement in an area where I had hardly had any success and that was with the tropical jellyfish, the blue blubbers. I've now kept these alive for over two months. So for me, it's been a win-win situation. Come on back for future episodes as we learn more about the advantages of decapsulating baby brine shrimp.